This story started from a very strange message on this tape recorder, which was found on a mountain in Japan. Hey guys, welcome to Carter's English Stories. In this video, you'll learn 22 useful words while practicing your listening skills through a true story about one of the biggest mysteries on the internet. So, if you're interested in learning English through true stories about dark and strange things, then make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can keep learning every time I upload. All right, let's learn some English. Japan is made up of four main islands. Hokkaido is the northernmost island, and it has a beautiful national park called Daisetsuzan. This park is even called the Playground of the Gods because it has big mountains that rise up into the clouds. The tallest mountain in this park is Mount Asahidake, which is also called Mount Asahi. It's over 2,000 meters high, and it's a very popular place to go hiking. People say that the trail to the top of Mount Asahi isn't too difficult to climb, but there is one spot close to the top that can be confusing. At this spot, the trees start to disperse, making it hard to see where the trail goes, because now you're in a wide open area with no clear path to follow. Hikers are told to look for a big square boulder called Safe Rock to help them figure out where they are. Once you reach Safe Rock, it should be easy to find the rest of the trail and follow it to the top. But there's a catch. In the same area as the safe rock, there is another big square boulder that looks just like the safe rock. This boulder is called false safe rock, and if a hiker takes it for the real safe rock, they will be led down a path where many people have gotten lost. If you accidentally follow the false safe rock, then at first it will feel like you're getting closer to the top of the mountain. But after a while, the trail starts to go slowly downhill and enters a bamboo-filled valley. This may seem like an easy problem to solve. Just don't go down into the valley, right? But for many people, it's their first time hiking there, so they're not familiar with the area, and if they accidentally go down the wrong trail with the false safe rock, often they just convince themselves they're on the right path, and they keep going. However, after following the wrong path, they walk down into a valley where there are a lot of steep cliff drops and swampy areas. Plus, when you get into this area, the bamboo is very tall and thick, so it's really difficult to see. In fact, it's so hard to know where you're going that you could even walk off a cliff by accident. So hikers who took the wrong trail from Fall Safe Rock have gotten lost in this dangerous area over the years, and not all of them have come back. On July 24, 1989, in the afternoon, a police helicopter went out to look for two hikers from Tokyo who had gone missing after the rescue crew found a huge SOS sign made from logs on the ground a few kilometers from the mountain trail. And so they flew down to where the sign was to rescue the hikers. When the helicopter landed, the hikers came out of the woods just north of the big SOS sign. The crew and the hikers got on the helicopter and headed back to the hospital. 
Everyone was happy that the rescue was successful and that no one's life was in danger. The rescue helicopter was able to find the two hikers because they made the big SOS sign from logs in an open area in the woods. This sign was extremely big. Each letter was around five meters tall and three meters wide. After they had arrived at the hospital and treated the hikers, the police commended the two hikers for making the big sign because otherwise they might not have found them. But then the two hikers looked at each other confused and said, SOS sign? We didn't make an SOS sign. The officers were surprised by this and they realized that this must mean there is someone else still lost on the mountain. Since it turned out that the big SOS sign wasn't made by the two hikers they just rescued, it was a huge stroke of luck that the two men were close to the sign while the helicopter was searching for them. Since the police realized that if these guys didn't make the SOS sign, then there must be someone else lost on the mountain. So another search and rescue mission was set up for the next morning to look for the unknown hiker. The next day, on July 25, 1989, the second search began, but this time it was on the ground. The SOS sign was found about four kilometers from the top of Mount Asahidake. So the police started a thorough search of that area. It didn't take them long to find out who had made the sign. Shortly after returning to the area, bones were found near the SOS sign. And when put together, they made a human skeleton. These bones were brought to the Asahikawa Medical University so they could be looked at and identified. The university said that they belonged to a woman with type O blood. This is an important detail to remember for later. Not too far away from the SOS sign, the officers also found a backpack in a hole under a tree. Contained in this backpack were personal items like a driver's license, toothpaste, soap, and a towel. But the thing that stood out the most was a tape recorder that had a very creepy message. According to the driver's license, the backpack belonged to a Japanese man named Kenji Iwamura, who was 25 years old. Kenji went missing in the same area five years earlier in 1984. Before he went missing, Kenji had been living in a lodge near the mountain. At that time, he told the lodge's owner that he was going to climb Mount Asahi in just a few days. But a few days later, when Kenji was supposed to check out of the lodge, he had disappeared. The owner of the lodge went to his room and knocked on the door, but there was no one there. He opened the door with his master key and looked inside. Kenji wasn't there, but most of his things still were. The lodge owner thought that Kenji must have gotten into trouble, so he called the police to report him missing. The police searched for Kenji, but he was never found. And now that they found his bag five years later, the case was reopened. When the police listened to one of the tapes found in his bag, they were shocked by what they heard. Recorded on the tape was the voice of a young man screaming loudly. The voice, which was clearly distressed, said, I'm on a cliff and can't move. SOS, help me. I'm on a cliff and can't move. SOS, help me. I'm at the spot where I first saw the helicopter. The bamboo grass is too deep 
and I can't go anywhere. Please lift me up from here. This is a short clip of the audio from the recording. Just a quick warning, this tape may be a bit disturbing. So if you don't want to hear it, you can skip this part or just mute the audio. Since Kenji said SOS quite a few times on the tape, the police were able to deduce that the SOS sign must have been made by Kenji five years ago, not by the hikers they had just rescued. That seems obvious, right? But here's where things get really weird. After finding Kenji's backpack, the police called Kenji's parents to verify that the belongings in the bag were actually his. Officers said that when Kenji's parents listened to the recording, they weren't sure if the voice on it was their son's or not. Not only that, but the SOS sign that was found in the open area was made out of 19 logs from trees that were 100 meters away. I don't know if you guys have ever cut a tree before, but it's actually extremely hard. Not to mention, these logs were cut precisely. And to cut that many logs in a clean way like that, you would at least need a good ax or a saw, but no cutting tools were found in the area. And even with those tools, cutting down that many logs, then dragging them 100 meters to the open area would be an extremely difficult job for a strong and healthy person, let alone someone that's been lost outside without food or water for a long time. Because of this, one popular theory is that maybe Kenji wasn't alone. This theory could also explain why Kenji's parents didn't totally recognize the voice on the recorder. Another strange thing about this case is that the bones that they found near the backpack were those of a woman, but the voice on the tape and the belongings in the bag were those of a man. So to make sure they hadn't made any mistakes, the Asahikawa Medical University was asked to test the bones again. However, this time, the police said, oh, oops, uh, last time we tested, we made a mistake. It turns out the bones don't belong to a woman with type O blood, but to a man with type A blood. And this happened to match the sex and blood type of Kenji. When this came out in the newspapers in Japan, people were very skeptical because this new information seemed to conveniently solve the mysteries of where Kenji was and who the bones belonged to. Many people did not believe this and stated that this was simply made up by the police so they could close the case and move on. As of today, the case is closed, but many people are still debating online as to whose bones were found, whose voice was on the tape, and who actually made that SOS sign. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Before we finish, here is a quick recap of all the words we learned. You guys can post sentences using these words in the comments to help you and others practice. So if you enjoyed this video or it was useful to you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more English stories. Also, don't forget to download the word list PDF. You can download it by clicking the link in the description below. This will help you to remember the words that you learned. 
All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.